Hello, today I'm going to show you how I built this 55 gallon drum concrete mixer. This is a concrete mixer that I built with just spare parts and I think anybody could tackle this project. I start with a 55 gallon drum. These are pretty easy to find. You can get them used. These, of course, you're using this for a concrete mixer so you don't need to be food grade quality or anything like that. It does need to be metal. Um, so what I do first is I'm going to divide this up because I'm going to cut the top edge into 16 slots and what that's going to do is allow me to shrink the intake side of this concrete mixer and allows the uh, concrete from not splashing out as you as you mix it so I start by marking it out uh, around the edge and then I go ahead and cut the top off now I actually started this project about two months ago I had a uh, friend that we were building a wall for and we ended up mixing about 22 or 24 wheelbarrow loads of concrete by hand let me tell you I was pretty tired after that and was thinking there's got to be a better way um, and we didn't even get half his wall done so uh, went online was looking up I see a lot of people that have, have built these 55 gallon drum uh, concrete mixers I haven't seen anybody actually show how to build it so uh, I thought I would just take you through the process of, of, of what I did and just so that you know I, these are ideas from a bunch of different ones that I've seen online and sort of try to put it together into something that will work for me. So um, as I cut all the slits around the top now you'll see that I cut a little V notch in and what that does is when I bring the, in, the, the top together that allows me to weld the, the outside rim together in one piece and then the other part will actually overlap and then I'll tack weld those together and I'll show you this in a minute when I actually take a, a rope put it around there and draw this thing tight and you'll see how it makes the uh, how it makes a nice uh, tapered top so now it's ready to weld I got the shape that I want and I just go around and tack on, weld all the, the rim together. All right, I built the frame out of some spare metal that I've had left over made just a, a basic frame that I ended up adding to later. I'll give you the, the, the dimensions at the end of this video and that'll show you the size of the stand, the width, the height and all that. Now the bearing that supports the drum, I'm using these one inch bearings and these sleeves I, are actually from a, the hardware store and they're actually plumbing fittings and these bearings actually press into these pretty good. I'm using a one inch threaded rod and that's what fits into those bearings and then that screws to the bottom of this barrel. And now I'm measuring how long these stands are. I end up cutting them because I, I had to, a little trial and error, but um, I, again, I'll give you those dimensions at the end. Now so that this thing can actually pivot and so you can pour the concrete out, I'm going to have it, this pipe welded to the sides of the bracket and then that will sit in these little holders and then on the bottom to support the weight I'm using these wheels and these wheels get bolted underneath and then they'll actually support the main weight of the concrete now the drive is using a motorcycle chain around the outside of the barrel and that just gets welded onto the barrel and that's how we're able to reduce the the speed of the rotation. Now here is the new legs I added to. You can see it's a little rusty now. Again, I, I started this about a, two months ago and just got through doing a little bit of concrete work where I mixed some stuff by hand. I was like, man, I gotta finish this project. So I'm back on it. I put some angle iron inside, welded and bolted it and that's for the, to uh, actually do the mixing action inside. Okay, the hardest part of this build was going to be trying to figure out how to to take a motor and get it to rotate with enough torque and power and also slow enough 
to turn this barrel at the right speed. I was really, really lucky and I was at a, a salvage yard and I found this 90 volt DC uh, gear driven motor and it worked and I was able to pick it up. Actually, the guy gave it to me. So, um, because I buy stuff from him all the time. Anyway, so I got really lucky, found this. I welded a motorcycle sprocket to it, to the, to the front uh, gear drive. And then that fits the chain that goes around the barrel. And the RPMs ends up being perfect for this. Um, I end up making a bracket to support it. And you can see I get it all lined up. And the teeth rotate the barrel. Now the, the center part of the barrel is supported by this one shaft here, which is a one inch uh, thread rod welded to the center of the barrel. But then the actual torque that's applied to the barrel is through this chain. And then the weight of the concrete actually sits on the wheels that are underneath it. So the only part that the bearings are actually holding is just keeping it centered and keeping it from being able to fall off the uh, drum. These are the, the, the legs. I added these, these feet to it so that it uh, would be a little more stable when you put weight on the front of it. And this is a handle that I added to it to allow to tilt. I also put a washer around the other side. I end up cutting a slot in that so I can take this apart. And then this is the platform gonna be for the electrical box. I also make a safety cover here for this gear. And I just take a five gallon bucket and cut it up and uh, makes a really nice little protective cover for that gear drive. Now you should be able to either pick up a motor like this or uh, wheelchair motors, uh, some of those motors that you can buy that anything that has some kind of gear drive on it uh, with a, enough power, 12 volts or 24 volts, uh, should work for this. Also, you could end up gearing it down with another big gear and sprocket to a faster turning motor. I've seen that done also online. I end up wiring this up. Um, I, I, I went through a bridge rectifier, uh, regular AC power, and was able to get the volts down to the proper voltage and runs this motor perfect. I'm actually able to control the speed, not very much. I end up getting, it's about perfect, the RPMs on it when it's at a little less than full power. Um, but as you can see, it spins. Okay, as you can see, as it's spinning, I'm still able to pivot it and go through the full range. And so this allows me to use it and pour it out into a wheelbarrow. The height that I picked allows me to pour it into a wheelbarrow or into a five gallon bucket, depending on, on how I'm gonna uh, deliver the concrete to wherever I'm putting it. So here's the, the, the roller wheels working and the handle. I end up making a little stop here and that's to keep it from rotating too far down on the back here. So that's just a stop. So the way the concrete will actually sit on that and the way the motor and everything. And the actually the pivot point ends up being about perfect when you have concrete in it. It's not too hard to, to pour it. So here's my first job. It's a very small job and I'm actually using um, regular concrete mix that you buy in a bag just because it's a small job, but I did want to try this thing out and see if there was any problems that I had to work out, um, which there was, and it was, uh, this was a good test. I ended up, I, I was able to put three bags in, and then I had some pop problems with the motor slipping. So I ended up making a bracket out of a, um, like a U-bracket, and that supported the motor a lot tighter on the back, and that kept the, the slipping problem down. And then also, when I'm pouring the concrete mix into the front here, my son has to hold it to keep the thing from flipping down. So I added a stop that you can just flip up and down and, and that locks it so that as you're pouring or putting the mix into it, it doesn't flip downwards. But uh, here it is using it. My son's, um, like I said, we had a small job. We're doing some five gallon buckets in the, into the back of the house. and. Um, one just a little slab but uh, it worked great the torque was there I had no problems with the motor and the torque at all here's the bracket that I ended up putting on 
uh, to strengthen up the support of the motor and that worked perfect after I put that on there, I had no more problems. And then in the front here, you'll see the little lock mechanism I made just out of a hinge. And what that does is that will keep it, when I, I, I flip it up like that and that'll, when I pour in the, the mix into the front or shoveling it in or whatever, that keeps it from being able to, to flip down from the weight. And then when I'm ready to pour it, I can just flip that down and, and it works great. Okay, here are some of the dimensions of the frame and the supports. And if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments.